Man is not forsaken on earth. He is a child of God engaged in constructive work, temporarily clothed in flesh. He is a student in a meritorious school where he must learn to raise himself up. The human struggle is his opportunity, his set of tools, and his textbook. How childish to imagine that the mere ringing down of the curtain or physical death would settle transcendental questions of the infinite. One life is but a single act, one body a garment, one century a day, one task an experience, one triumph an acquisition, one death a breath of renovation. How many lives, how many bodies, how many centuries, how many tasks, how many triumphs, how many deaths are still allotted to us? These outstanding messages from the spirits via a human medium convey the message of spiritism. Spiritism emerged in the mid-19th century through the findings and philosophy of French educator Hippolyte Léon Denisard Rivaille, also known as Alain Kardec. Contemporaries of Alain Kardec included spiritist philosophers Léon Denis and renowned author Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Spiritism followers explored the nature, origin and destiny of souls often through afterlife communication conveyed via a medium. Throughout Latin America and parts of Europe, Spiritism is known and practiced by millions of people. Numerous books have been written that provide insights into the afterlife and the soul's immortality. One such volume is No Solar, or The Astral City, by spirit André Luis through spiritist medium Francisco Cangito Xavier. Francisco Cangito Xavier was a well-known Brazilian philanthropist who co-authored more than 400 books. In The Astral City, former medical doctor André Luis speaks from the afterlife of his awakening and healing within a spiritual society near the Earth's surface. This story describes not only the continuation of life beyond the physical body, but more importantly, how heaven cares for each and every human soul. The following excerpt from The Astral City describes how André Luis was strengthened spiritually upon his rescue from the lower zones. Chapter 12 The Lower Zone After having received such precious elucidations, I felt most anxious to improve my knowledge of some of the facts he had told me about. His references to spirits in the shadowy lower zones aroused my curiosity. The lack of religious instruction on earth is very often the cause of a serious state of confusion over here. What could the lower zone be? I had heard hell and purgatory mentioned in the Roman Catholic sermons I had attended out of social obligation, but I never had the slightest notion of the lower zone. The next time I met my amiable attendant, I had all of my questions at my fingertips. He listened carefully, then replied, Well, now, how can you be unaware of that region when you were kept there for so long? With a shudder of horror, I recalled my past sufferings. Lysias continued, The lower zone begins on the Earth's crest. It is the shadowy zone for those who, in the world, turned a deaf ear to the call of their sacred duties, which they failed to fulfill, languishing instead in indecision, or dragging themselves into the mire of wrongdoings. You see, 
on reincarnating, a spirit promises to carry out the mission assigned to him in the Father's work. Yet, when he recommences his experiences, he finds it very difficult to keep his word. Instead, he blindly follows the dictates of his own selfishness. Thus, he continues to cultivate old hates and passions, forgetting that hatred is not justice, just as passion is not love. All that is superfluous and useless and balances the harmony of life. After physical death, great multitudes of obsessed entities remain in that misty region adjacent to the Earth's physical sphere. A well-accomplished duty serves as a gateway through which we enter the infinite. It brings us closer towards our goal, the sacred union with the Lord. It is natural, then, that one who neglects the tasks allotted to him should have that blessing indefinitely postponed. Lysias perceived my difficulty in grasping the full meaning of the lesson, owing to my almost total ignorance of spiritual principles, and tried to make it more objective. Now, suppose that each of us returns to the earth wearing filthy clothing in order to wash it in the waters of human life. Our dirty garment is our spirit body, molded by our own hands in past lives. Although we are granted the blessing of a new opportunity on earth, we generally forget our essential aim. Instead of cleansing ourselves through constructive efforts, we acquire even more stains, we incur heavier debts and imprison ourselves through our own actions. We return to the world to rid ourselves of our impurities, knowing that they are utterly inconsistent with the higher spheres. How, then, can we expect to enter those luminous spheres in an even worse condition? The lower zone is a place where negative mental residues are destroyed. It is a sort of purgatory where the refuse of delusions acquired by neglecting the sublime opportunity of an earthly life is gradually burnt away. The image could not have been clearer or more convincing. I was simply lost in amazement. Lysias, perceiving how useful these explanations could be to me, went on. The lower zone should be a region of great interest to those still on the physical plane, for it contains everything which is out of tune with a higher plane. Consider how wise divine providence was in allowing the creation of such a plane around earth. There we find compact legions of irresolute and ignorant souls, not wicked enough to be relegated to colonies of harder expiation, nor sufficiently virtuous to be admitted to higher plane. Those countless inhabitants of the lower zone are close companions to incarnate men, separated from them only by vibratory laws. It is no wonder, then, that such places are characterized by serious disturbances. There, rebellious spirits of all kinds are grouped together, forming invisible nuclei of extraordinary power, owing to the concentration of their common tendencies and desires. Many people on Earth become desperate when the postman doesn't turn up or when the train is late. The lower zone is full of such desperate creatures who, after physical death, are disappointed at not finding the Lord ready to satisfy their every whim. When they realize that the crown of glory and eternal life are awarded only to those who have worked with the Father, they show themselves as they truly are wasting precious time on petty deeds in the lower zone. Just as in the astral city, 
entities in the lower zone form a spiritual community, but their community is peopled with many different types of frustrated, idle and perverse entities. It is the threshold, a zone of tyranny and bondage, of exploiters and exploited. Lysias stopped, but I, greatly impressed, went on questioning. But how do you account for this state of things? Do these spirits have no defense, no organization? Organization, Lysias proceeded with a smile, is an attribute of organized spirits. You see, the lower zone to which we are referring is like a home where there is no bread, everybody complains, and no one is right. The absent-minded traveler will miss his train. The farmer who does not sow cannot reap. However, of one thing you can be sure. Even in the shadows and ordeals of the lower zone, divine protection never fails its inhabitants. Each spirit remains there just the necessary time, no more, no less. And in order to carry out the work of spirit care in the lower zones, the Lord has permitted the establishment of several settlements such as ours. I suppose then, I remarked, that the lower zone must be in close connection with the incarnate plane, even a kind of continuation of it? So it is, he agreed, and you will see there the net of invisible wires connecting it to human minds. It is peopled with disincarnated entities and the thought forms of those still on earth. Every spirit, whatever it might be, is a nucleus of radiating forces which can create, transform or destroy, manifesting as vibrations that earth science cannot yet understand. Thus, whoever is thinking is emitting positive or negative forces, and is consequently constructing or destroying something somewhere. It is by means of those mental currents that men establish connection with entities in the lower zone, whose tendencies are in accordance with their own, because every soul is a powerful magnet. You see, then, that an invisible army is at work behind the invisible one. The most strenuous missions in the lower zone are assigned to devoted helpers of the Ministry of Assistance. If a fireman's work in the great cities of Earth is exhausting and dangerous because of the blazing flames and clouds of smoke he has to fight, no lighter is the missionary's task in the lower zone. These missionaries have to withstand heavy fluids emitted by thousands of minds obsessed in the practice of evil or terribly chastised by redeeming ordeals. I tell you, my friend, a great deal of courage and a superior capacity for self-sacrifice are necessary to be able to help those who are still unable to understand and appreciate the assistance offered them. As Lysias paused once more, I exclaimed, Oh, how I would like to work to help those unhappy creatures, to offer them the spiritual bread of enlightenment. My friendly attendant looked at me kindly, and after a few moments of reflection, took his leave with this parting remark. I wonder whether you feel duly prepared for such a mission. Gentle viewers, thank you for your company today, for words of wisdom.